Hey y'all, welcome back for another view of the latest outing at El Mirage. I was a bit remiss in my last video. I neglected to include this photo uh, of two of the best helpers a guy could ever have. Uh, they're in the background, kind of hiding, but waving their arms. Peter Hudson is on the left and Dan Armstrong is on the right. Peter I've been working with for quite some time now, a number of years, and uh, his steadfast support and vast knowledge has been indispensable. Uh, he's just terrific. He worked for years, decades at China Lake uh, doing research and analysis on new designs and he's a pilot of many different types and he has a broad background in aviation and started out much the way I did uh, building and flying standard regala wings. So it's been around. Uh, Dan Armstrong, same kind of way, same kind of guy. Um, He's been around uh, hang gliders for a long, long time, uh, been involved in aviation inside and out, uh, used to be a director at uh, Scaled Composites, and he is quite well known, at least here in California, for his expertise on towing hang gliders. Um, so uh, it was his first day out with the wing, and I was uh, thrilled to meet him, and he was a tremendous help, especially when he uh, was making his focus on being safe. What was the safest way of approaching uh, the tests that we had to do and the data that I wanted to collect. And uh, uh, both of these guys are like my friend Bob Mackey says, they know how to carry the other end of the couch. Uh, couldn't have better helpers and thank you very much guys. So that said, uh, let's move on to uh, what this uh, other test was about. We actually ran two tests when we were at the lake and this is actually the first test we ran. Okay, so the goal for this first run was to uh, go up to 20 miles an hour and uh, just ensure that I had good directional steering, which I had confidence in, and then attempt to lift the nose up off the ground and just roll along on the main gear. And if I could hold the nose in a steady position, uh, then I knew I had uh, good positive pitch control, uh, at least for at taxi speed. Uh, and then if I felt comfortable with it, I was going to do some roll reversals. So what we'll see in the video here is I will get the nose up and then I do a roll input and I experienced a fair amount of yaw in one direction. Uh, and with the front wheel off the ground, I have no steering available to me. Uh, and when you're on the ground and you're on tow without steering, eh, it's a little bit of a problem. <laughs> So I put the nose back down on the ground and I did some roll reversals with all three wheels on the ground, which went well. Uh, good positive roll control and uh, I was very happy with the uh, responses that I was getting out of the controls. Uh, felt very comfortable with the aircraft. So we ended that run um, and felt very comfortable moving forward with uh, an attempt to fly on the next run. So let's take a look at this and we'll see the effectiveness of these new elements. Okay, here we go. Uh, once again, this is at uh, quarter speed so that we have a chance to actually see what's happening real time. It goes by much too fast. So you're going to see me uh, holding a little bit of up elevator here while we come up to speed, which is about 30 miles an hour. And I'm kind of looking to see at what speed the nose lifts off the ground. And it's right around 20 miles an hour the nose begins to lift. And right after the nose lifts, I uh, uh, initiate a small uh, left roll and you got to watch the elevon because when the elevon goes all the way up on the left and all the way down on the right, that's when I do that roll. And of course with the nose wheel off the ground, it immediately started turning left and going away from the uh, uh, correct track <laughs> to head towards the truck. So I immediately put the nose back down on the ground. And that roll was a little hard to see, the nose off the ground. It's a little difficult to see. You'll see the right wing tip come up higher off of the ground. Uh, but once I put the nose back down on the ground and I have a little bit more stabilized, then I do uh, a couple more roll reversals. And I think shortly here we'll see, uh, yeah, there the right wing is going down, going down, getting fairly close to the ground. That was nice. And then we come back and roll left. And the right wing's coming up higher, and then we go back down and roll to the right and come even closer to the ground this time. Very nice. 
So I had very precise roll control. I was able to bring the wing down to within inches of the ground and hold it there and roll back the other way and do the same thing. So uh, in, or, in order to do that type of roll, uh, you have to have fairly uh, good, precise roll control. Uh, and that gave me confidence that we're ready to fly, that I'd have enough roll control to keep wings level uh, and handle the wing precisely. Uh, a little bit tricky to watch the airspeed in the truck and, and the track that I'm on and the wingtips at the same time. I have a general feel for how far I can roll the aircraft before the wingtip touches. Uh, and uh, I use my peripheral vision a little bit to handle that situation. And then here at the end, we had a failure of the release. Uh, it wouldn't release me, so Dan released on his end. And then Dan worked on the tow release system a little bit to make sure it was more reliable. <clears throat> of course, for these, uh, this test run, or actually both of these runs, uh, the wingtip wheels used to be are installed at the winglet. They're installed on the winglet. And uh, now with no dihedral in the wing, uh, I'm going to have to move those wheels out to the wingtip. Uh, so it was a little bit tricky to bring that wingtip down without actually touching the ground because I didn't want to get it all scraped up. And where the wheels are now, they, they never touch the ground before the wingtip touches the ground. All in all, went w really well. And uh, here at the end, I was calling for uh, Peter to pick up speed. We had a little discrepancy between our airspeed indicators, and I needed to go a little bit faster to pick up the nose. And he was already going 20, he thought. I think his end was correct. I think my hall wind meter is a little inaccurate. Uh, but a good run, and uh, then we just rolled to a stop here at the end, uh, sooner or later. I didn't test the new braking system here yet. Uh, so at the end of this run, I was fairly happy with it. Uh, I know initially uh, uh, Peter and Dan were a little cons bit concerned about the rolls that had occurred, and... Uh, uh, they didn't know that I'd done them prematurely. We were thinking of doing that on a separate run, but I felt comfortable enough to do it on this run. So it took them a little bit by surprise. When I told them I did those rolls on purpose, they went, oh, okay, that's better. Uh, yeah, not out of control, actually under pretty precise control. So there we go. We're coasting to a stop. And uh, while I coast to a stop here, let me just say to all my patrons, thank you so very much for all your support. Uh, you're the guys that make this all possible um, and, uh, you know, helps pay for gas and food and all the other stuff and little bits and pieces here and there. And, and it makes all the difference in the world to me. And I hope that you continue to continue to enjoy watching this series as I push this design forward and get it into a uh, aircraft that uh, we can go out and soar on a regular basis and uh, let it really perform. And keep, in the meantime, keep your fingers crossed, and as I always say, fly safe and bye for now.